he had to force Brad's hand to start Rob, and I'll never really understand why. Danny had to literally trade Tice in order to get Rob in the starting lineup. Because <laughs> he missed that three-pointer, though. That's why, Jimmy. He missed that was what did it. Yeah. And, I mean, look what, look what you saw tonight from Rob. And, again, it's one game. But the style of play was very similar to what we've seen from him coming off the bench in, you know, in lesser amount of minutes. We already know his, um, you know, his numbers over 36 minutes are, you know, awesome. So I don't think it really was a surprise to a lot of people to see that production continue with better players around him for more, more times, you know, uh, for a yeah. longer period of time during the game. John, John just said it. Let's see it some more. You know, right, Oklahoma is going to be a, Oklahoma is going to be a tricky matchup. I think this was but a really good matchup for him. You know, they have a good, this isn't a one game thing. They have a good game plan when it comes to playing this team. They they build that wall. Grant's able to get into more comfortable, you know, matchups next to him. So I think it all worked well for the front court here, where when they're able to pack the paint against this team and protect the rim the way they did, it all worked out. Now there's going to be some other teams that exploit them a little bit more. Uh, there'll be a lot more switching oriented games. And on a night like tonight, let's be real. I, I don't think they would have been able to play Grant for 31 minutes against other kind of teams and have that work. And so there would have been uh, more no. pressure on Ojeways and those other type of guys. My point is, this wasn't an obvious move and there weren't obvious things for Brad to do throughout the course of the year. There just weren't a lot of options. Like, Rob's been playing for a month now and they've still been losing games. He's been playing more and more in recent weeks. They lose to the Grizzlies. They lose to the Bucks on Wednesday. This was a personnel problem all throughout. Now, maybe early, early in the year, you could look at Rob's minutes being a little low and say, all right, he's going to be more involved here. But I'll throw this back at you guys. Was he wrong in this tight sense to have everybody be involved? I know you guys just want to shelve Thompson in particular right to the side, but there's these certain ideologies that Brad carries, one of which is keep everybody involved, get everybody a role on this team, and have nobody lost in the fold. And that's just something he rolls with. And that's why you had three centers they playing had- all year. You had no choice when you bring in a veteran like Thompson and you make promises to him and he's a clutch mm. guy and you want to do right by that and you don't want to have, you know, you, I mean, you brought him here. And, and you it's sold not like him. he sucks. He's playing solid. You brought a guy here yeah, who has fine. a pedigree, who you sold, who you want to make nice with his agent and his pals and you want to keep relations good and you bring him in here and he you sold him on his role and what it's going to be. You can't just not give it to him at when five games in, you're like, Holy crap, Rob Williams got really good. Um, and, uh, you know, and Tice got us to the Eastern conference finals last year and he might be our third best big. And you could tell probably five games into the season that that was the case. And what are you going to do? Pull the, you know, pull the carpet out from under him. So they stuck with him 15, 20. It just, it became so obvious so early that like, he should be the specialist who comes in there and bangs a little bit and gives you a few fouls a game and some physicality, but he should be playing the third most minutes among those three bigs. And that was, that's, I think the only case we were making all year that it was pretty obvious that in this big rotation, Thompson deserved the fewest minutes. It it just took forever to get there, you know, and now you have no choice with Tice gone. He's going to slot in, but my goodness, if he starts over Rob, when he's healthy, I'm going to take a, I'm taking a week. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be. Does it matter though? I mean, if he does, starts and then he plays. The, how can you it watch? It does tonight? matter. How can you watch tonight him play with that first unit and say, oh yeah, I want, I, you know, let's get some Tristan in there. It matters. <laughs> I know the first five minutes of the game matter somewhat, but I say this about Drummond too. But it's when we all the rotations. Play. It's, it's continuing yeah. to stay with those guys. That's you true. Get, you yeah. get two big chunks in the first and the third and to close the game. And really the only opportunity he had to play with them, he'd have a few minutes with Tatum in the second quarter, but really it would just be the last few minutes of the game where you'd get Rob in there. And how many of those times were like, wow, they really played well with Rob in the game together, you know, or, right. and, so that it, it's it a good matter, point. I think. Yeah. yeah, I just think it's we, we've reached a point where it's like they now they need more reps than ever together because in the postseason, like it's sky's the limit, if you will, right? <laughs> for for you Celtics fans that, that are dying to see more of this, like this is what we were talking about for weeks yeah. or months, or for in John's <laughs> case, months. John's case, months. I, I'll, Back I'll to the playoffs, honest. yeah. For me, it was weeks. It was weeks. But John, John was saying this is before the new year, I think. So I've been banging he this drum for a while, good. guys. Even in the bubble, we're just like, why are we like no, in you the saw bubble? It. I think you we saw do it. see that he's doing a lot of things out here, right? Yeah. Like, again, forget all effect. of that. The best part about Rob is that he doesn't um doesn't look at all 
anything you've ever had concern about how he does or his role in this and that, like even from the beginning of the season, those moments are fewer and fewer where he looks lost or he has that lapse. Even though we thought right. it was a little, a little ridiculous that people were like hanging those things on him as like, oh, he can't play because of that. But mm -hmm. he looks so comfortable out there. He's he, he, he he's always in control. He makes smart Confident. plays all the time. You know, there's, he really, really is playing a clean game, too. I love what Jimmy said, too, because I do want to hammer in on that, this Brad notion that they really had to trade three guys to open up some of this stuff. Rob, in particular, I don't think the Neesmith and Pritchard stuff all matters all that much on the low end of that. But the question becomes, if they're going to go this Andre Drummond route, do you end up in that same position again where you're splitting center minutes between three different guys and it really can't break that mold because of the way Brad views the situation? I think that's a real concern. I, I do advocate Drummond coming in, but I can see a situation there where Drummond's getting a little bit, Rob's getting a little bit, Thompson's getting a little bit, and then you're in a similar spot as you were before. It, it's this, such a tough line to walk, nah, but Jimmy's nah, right. Nah, nah. Can, think, you, get, I, I can you get Brad to change? I think it's a great chance your boy your boy Thompson is is is, is, is playing playing I don't know tic tac toe with Taco at the end of the bench man I don't know like if it comes down to it hey, I, I don't think you think be he's gonna bench like, Thompson I mean, if Drummond came in I think Drummond I think what Bobby in, said like Dude, Drummond was I think you're beasting it this season man people like I don't that think people gonna be in the position to to think, on okay, I have to play 11, 11 guys you know? no but that's not what I'm saying Jimmy no. I'm saying you're gonna end up in the same spot you were before. Yes. I agree. That's what's going to happen. He probably will what, to an extent. Yeah, I think I think he probably will. But I think you're going to be right the, back where you were. But I think is Thompson, it worth it? Thompson's minutes go down less. Grant's probably on the outside looking in too. And I get Rob's at the point now where he's going to get. He's got to get his twenty to twenty five. I still think he's got to get twenty. But it's going to be on the low minutes. end again. He's going to be back to 1920 and we're going to be losing our minds again. Cause you're going to watch this clunk, you know, Drummond in there doing Drummond things and the offense is going to look clunky again. And he might get some stats and we're going to sit here and argue about whether he's good or not. But like, it's going to be that same three big rotation. If you, if you bring it's Drummond be, in, it's going to be big Greg Monroe energy is what's going to be. If you bring Drummond in, no, Thompson has better to, than that. Thompson's got to go down to single digit minutes. I, right. I kind of sit on the fence on this one because Jimmy's right. And, and Joe Sways, too, mentioned this. If Thompson just keeps lulling along here and has just this minimal impact that he's had throughout the year, you're in a tough spot going into the playoffs just leaning on Rob for everything. There'll be games where he follows a lot. There'll be games that aren't great matchups for him, even series. If you end up in a series that isn't a great matchup for Rob and you need a, a guy on Embiid or some of these other situations, oh. bam, you, you're going to want another guy who can get on the boards, do some of this other stuff. Aren't there other are you so by aren't you aren't there bad matchups for all the other guys too? You know, like is yeah. it like no, but I mean you need a body and to get a body like this, a really good player, it's tough to pass up. I understand, I agree, but completely. like look, not everybody how many perfect centers are there out there? Like two, one, okay. Oh, Every night there's gonna be a situation where okay. I mean, or, or perfect anything out there. Some nights there's going to be nights where it's like, here's a tougher matchup for this really good player that we have on our team. Not every night is perfect, but like he's just a better overall player than everybody else who plays that position. So you live with it again. It's so strange that you're like so worried about matchups, you know, like, and some nights at Rob, there are things that Rob look, there are things that Rob uh, happen that Rob might not be able to handle as well as a different type of person, but by the same token, he's going to create so many problems for other people because yeah. of what he does that it's going to counterbalance. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not arguing against that. I, yeah. Let me re let me reframe this for you guys. They're in a tricky position with Drummond, where he's definitely better than Thompson, as Joe Sway mentioned. But to get him in here, you're going to have to make certain promises and. Like things like he's probably going to have to start. He's probably going to have to play quite a bit. And they're just going to have to walk this tricky line where he might like bump into Rob's minutes here and mess with that a little bit. But you also need him because he's so much better than Thompson. That's what I'm trying to say here. So like, yeah, how do you great. walk that line? He's so much better than Thompson. Th this is an issue for the Thompson fans. I don't think this is a huge issue for the Rob fans out there. I still think with Drummond, Rob's going to get his 20 – plus minutes a game at this point would you promise drummond the starting role to get him in here 
No, I don't think Drummond's looking. I don't think so Drummond might can expect come. a start. But where? Okay, where is he starting? Well, Lakers. That's the thing, Jimmy. Because you no, know, I mean Charlotte. Of the places mentioned on the list, Charlotte and Boston are the two you would think pathways to most minutes. Actually, Charlotte the most. He'll play um, a lot with the Lakers too. Charlotte though. more than well, Boston. Here, here's Charlotte the, the most, but with Boston, the only hook here is. Uh, revitalize your career, and I'm going to give you 25 minutes a game. The Celtics have to sell him on that. If they bring him in here and he's playing 16 minutes a game, sharing right. the court with – that's going to be bad, bad, bad. So, he's coming so, in here to play 25 minutes a game. I think he wants to play 20, 20 – let's call it 20, and he wants to go to a team that has a good – that has a chance, whether that's, you know, the Lakers or the Celtics or whoever. Charlotte, Lakers, I think. Charlotte, yeah. Sh- Charlotte's, you know, obviously a team now that you have to take seriously. But – I think the minutes are going to be somewhat similar, you know, around those teams. Now, does he have to start? I don't know if you have to promise that. And all of a sudden he's starting over Rob. I don't think Rob's going to take exception to it. Again, I think Tristan Thompson is the odd man out here and Grant Williams to an extent. I mean, those minutes are going to get eaten up. You're, you're talking 20 minutes now. Uh, but I still think Rob gets his. Drummond is so much better than Thompson, as Bobby just said. I mean, you just look at Drummond this season. So much better. You know, everybody loves to trash Drummond and, it's it's low hanging fruit, I guess. He's you know the, the traditional big who can't shoot, but this guy is a double double machine. He rips down boards. He says he's had like three, I think at least three games this year of twenty plus rebounds, twenty yeah. plus rebounds. Like let's, there is still value to that. Like he's a, cent- he's a center for boomers, okay? Not exactly, not, not for, but like not for the kids. You know what? He he's a he's a force down low. I know he's not gonna open up the court and drain threes and whatever, but he he serves a very you know specific purpose and he does his job well and there's a reason that all really good teams want him right now so everyone on your high horse like drumming this drumming that relax like this guy can still play and he's better than some of the centers you have so let's not complain about if, if he actually does want to play for the celtics it's only good thing You're not gonna play him yeah. and hurt the team by playing him like he's going to contribute positively and if there's everyone out there who wants the celtics to get better this season should be thrilled that he even took the interview with Ainge. Yeah, it cracks me up, man. The, the, the picky Celtics fans, I'll never understand. When your team's under 500, <laughs> like, listen, if the Celtics are in the mix, like, count your blessings, man. Like, this right. is free stuff. For some yeah. of these buyers. It used to be, oh, like, would you trade Would you trade for Drummond? Now it's just like, yeah, would right. you accept Drummond? You're walking down the street and you see this, like, and, you and know, you're at the top. You're, yeah. you're one of the top teams, you know, on that list, you know, so so that's a good thing, you know, because some of these buyout candidates, they're coming from teams that have a record that's not that far off from where the Celtics stand right now. So it's like this is a unique case for on for in, 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 in Drummond because he can obviously put himself uh, out there a deep playoff run or at least someone a team like the Celtics will say, hey, listen, with you, each of conference finals without you, you know, maybe not. So. Uh, you could sell him on that for sure, and I, I, I think he's he's buying that stock because he's thinking to himself, yeah, okay, I can go to Charlotte, you know, maybe get similar uh, exposure or maybe a little bit more than that. But then, how far are they going to go in the postseason? So, you know, it's this a is very a, it's a good thing for the Celtics for sure. It's a very thin line because the people that hate him have good reason to, and I was one of those people at the money he was at because he was just a disaster at twenty eight million. He wasn't anywhere close to being worth that. Now, right. as a minimum guy, it's the other end of the spectrum. He's probably a little bit underrated. In that sense, defensively, yes. he was a big part it's, of making the Cavaliers one of the best defenses in the league to start this year. It's fr- it's a free, like all star caliber player. I mean, yeah. like you yeah. can't argue against it. The fear you that can't. everybody had is what will Brad do? And again, chemistry, it's the, that kind it's of the stuff. Yeah, factor, it's the so, yeah. chemistry factor, and it's the 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 suppression of Rob, who is your third best player. Okay, For whatever I don't care. What do you want to say? He's your third best player right now. Um, Free throws get a little tricky asset, now too. Actually, your third best player overall. So you yeah. have to play. You cannot. You can't go backwards and go into Rob into 18, 19 minutes and Tristan for 18, 20 and Drummond for twenty. I think that'll be a mess. If you, if Brett, if we know, I think if every Celtics fan knows that if he comes in, Tristan's going to go down to single digit minutes, and that's fine. So be it. It's going to be hard though because you got. And actually, and you can't Tristan, dump Tristan. Yeah, you can't can, at this point. You can't buy him out. He's got another year. So you're just stuck with it. You right. just got to live with Tristan, you know? 
And you realistically need three guys. Again, I'm going to be concerned. He's got to be a good sport about it. He's got to be like, okay, I'll play eight to ten minutes a game or 12 minutes and, or and whatever. He's, and he's got to be because he did not come in here with the right amount of performance. This COVID thing, if it was what it was, it was a joke, and he deserves to be knocked down the ladder because of that. So he's got to come in here with though. a little bit of humbleness. Well, we still, know. I mean, if he was out at all and putting himself even in that position, that's something you got to look at and be like, come on. So, I, again, I think just from play know. alone, you know, yeah. forget that part, but play alone even. Yeah. He's got to be a little humble because he hadn't played well. I'll say this too, though. This is the tricky thing about losing Tice. In that situation, you'd have three horrendous free throw shooters at center, which is tough. <laughs> Thank you.